because since we're a sprint program, we really judge our program <clears throat> on the uh, by the four by one. And in 21 years of feed the cats, um, our average time, uh, average best time per year has been 42.58. Now, before you say, "Oh, that's that's not that great," this is r really fast for Illinois. Nobody in Illinois can can say this. Um, and, and by the way, this is also at three different schools, a real small school um, in Southern Illinois, a medium sized school in Tennessee, and a brand new school in, uh, in Plainfield where I am now. And you say, oh, Plainfield's a big school, right? Well, it's, we're the 79th biggest school in Illinois, so it's not like we're a dominant, you know, there, there are schools twice our size in Illinois. So anyway, we've had 12 all-state teams, five state championships, and two state records in the four by one in the last 21 years. And I think the key to, uh, to all of this stuff is not actually what we do in practice, but the fact that we keep our athletes happy and healthy. And so a lot of my, you, know, you say, wait, I thought we were talking about the 400 here. Yes, but this is the why I teach the 400, I train the 400 the way that I do. I will not sacrifice happy and healthy to do any event. One of my slogans, catchphrases is tired is the enemy, not the goal. And I think it's really important here. That's Ashen Eaton on the ground and he doesn't look good right now. And this is, um, this is, this moment is right after the 1500 meters. And th these athletes are in terrific physical shape. There's, there's no athletes arguably in the world that are in better shape than a decathlete, 10 events. But this event is the 10th event, the final event. And it's the only endurance event of the decathlon. And so these guys are not well trained in the 1500 meters. And, and you think, well, they should train hard, shouldn't they? No, 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 no. Because if they trained hard for the 1500, they would lose speed and power that is required for the other nine events. So in the decathlon, they sacrifice the 1500 and they will feel like crap after run the 1500, just the way Ash and Eaton looks right now. They look like they're dead, but they have not sacrificed speed and power. And that's going to come back uh, as, as a central part of my training plan. I believe the 400 meter dash is a sprint. S just simple as can be. It is not a hybrid. And I also believe that no amount of conditioning makes the last 100 meters of the 400 meters pleasant. Running the 400 is the hardest thing my sprinters will ever do. We never run more than 200 meters in practice. Why do we not run more than 200? Because if we're doing more than 200, there is diminishing returns. We, we lose speed. We want to be fast all the time. Very similar to those decathletes. We don't ever want to do any training that results in a cost of speed and power. By the way, Marcellus is winning this 400 meters and I guarantee the six guys that he's running against, all six of them ran at least twice the volume that Marcellus ran. All of them. All of them are in better Clyde Hart shape than Marcellus Moore, but he's kicking their ass because he's fast. So you say, how about the four by four? If your four by one so good, how about the four by four? Well, you know, you could argue it's not as good. Um, instead of 12 all state teams, I've only had 10, um, but we, we've never sacrificed pure speed, which means we'll always be good in the 100, 200, four by one, four by two. But I have had 24 guys sub 50 in the four by four. And you say, oh, well, that's nothing in schools in tech. Don't be talking Texas. We'll talk about Texas in a minute. Um, in 17 of the 21 years, my team has been adequate, you know, under 325 and, uh, a school of 550 kids, uh, these very generic looking kids, uh, ran 318.3, which is the fastest time of a, uh, of a small school in the state of Illinois. Uh, and then most recently, this is 2019, uh, we, we got a 
11th in the state. I know that doesn't sound very good, but we had three young kids. And all three of those kids were going to be on my team this year. And the guy that would be our fourth guy, I believe, would have been the fastest of the bunch. So we would have had four guys this year that would have all run under 50 in the 4 by 4 somewhere in the 49s. And uh, because of that, we were we had a chance to win it all this year. So pretty sad that COVID ended our, our season. Now, Clyde Hart um, is one of my favorite slides when, you know, the, the, the guy wanted to do everything. Um, Clyde Hart had eight different types of 400-meter workouts. Remember, I took a lot of notes when I snuck into a clinic once. Uh, speed endurance, tempo endurance, strength endurance, endurance running. Oh, the word endurance is in all four. Endurance, you're not going to see the word endurance ever in one of my presentations unless I'm telling people that we don't do it. Um, so anyway, power speed, event running, speed, and strength. So he's going in eight different directions. Don Meyer uh, was my favorite basketball coach. And um, as a matter of fact, my whole certification program I'm doing right now is kind of a copy of, he, he put out 20 great videotapes back in the uh, early 80s when I was a basketball coach. And he was my hero, um, NAIA coach at David Lipscomb at the time. Uh, but anyway, Don Meyer said there's three stages of coaching, blind enthusiasm, sophisticated complexity, and ma mature simplicity. Um, I'm not very mature, but I, I think I'm, I'm at that third, uh, that third level. Having said that, I believe uh, nine out of every 10 college coaches are in the sophisticated complexity um, um, stage, and, and, and they're proud of it. They, they want to sound smarter than everybody else. Kind of a funny story. Um, this is Stuart McMillan. Um, and, uh, you know, I know Stu and he's a great guy. I mean, I could sit and talk with him for hours. Um, he's a reader and, and very thoughtful. I love his accent. And uh, um, I've had dinner with him a couple times. He spoke at our track football consortium a couple years ago. But anyway, he puts this stuff out on Altus and, you know, and college coaches all over the country um, just, you know, retweet it and, and, you know, you know, a million likes and all this stuff. And I think this is a hundred percent bullshit. Um, I, I just don't understand why people, uh, want to seem more complicated than they are. Maybe they are this complicated. I don't know. Um, but anyway, you're not going to get this stuff from me. We're going to do some straight talk because in feed the cats, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing is to get fast. It's speed that we do not want to go in eight different directions. We, we don't want to go through a maze like this, you know, uh, yeah, we're just not going to do it. Uh, by the way, slow people are not very good at these events. Um, and when you start thinking like this, maybe you see why as a head track coach, I'm going to value speed. Now, what's weird is that um, there is an event missing from this. And that's the 800. Um, I would think the slow people are kind of bad in the 800 too, but, but I'll, I'll give cross country coaches, uh, a chance to, um, to keep that, um, in their own category. Oh, forgot the four by four. Gotcha. So, uh, I don't disagree with everything Clyde says, just most of it. Uh, Clyde says the main reason we're seeing more of the sprinter type succeed in the 400 meters today is largely due to the fact that we are able to develop stamina and endurance more effectively than we can increase the sprinting abilities of the middle distance runner. In other words, he's saying that speed is the greatest com commodity out there. I mean, that, that, that if, if you're picking somebody to run the 400, pick a fast guy. Because if you pick a slow guy that can run all day, it's really hard to develop speed. Speed is so hard to, de to develop that many coaches think that speed is God given. It's not, it just grows like a tree. Speed is, is very slow to grow. I think not only would I coach speed, not only would I feed the cats with college athletes, but good God, if you were working with teenagers, who maybe have never been timed in a sprint in their life, why would you run them to death? 
why wouldn't you try to improve their absolute speed?